Welcome to Coffee Matters 2, one of three Coffee Matters locations in the St. John's Paradise area. Coffee Matters 2 is reminiscent of an Italian coffee house. It features statues, statues everywhere, great columns, lots of tables and chairs and some very comfortable chairs in which to sit back, relax, enjoy an espresso or even a meal. Hello, I'm Carl Wells, food critic and food journalist. And I'm Chef Steve Watts from Central Dairies. And Steve, uh, this is the perfect place for us because you love your espressos, I love coffee, and we both love food, and they have both here. Yeah, for breakfast, for lunch, it's almost a restaurant too. You it know, certainly so. is, yep. and speaking of that, look, they have a license here at Coffee Matters 2, and uh, they serve wine with meals. Liqueurs. Yeah, in your coffee, you can have a nice uh, Irish coffee or Absolutely. something like that. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Now, uh, this is the time of the year when people are a little bit depressed. You know, they've got credit card bills to pay. It's cold, it's dark. We decided to pick people up today. We're not only at a coffee house where they serve coffee, that's certainly a pick-me-up, but we've got a special guest, a sunshiny personality for Amy you. Amy Howe, she's a comedian, she's uh, promotes local food. So I've made a fantastic dish for her today. Praise local lamb shells. Oh, that sounds great. She's going to love it. And uh, like I say, you know, Amy is a, is a person who will really pick us up. She's got a sunshiny personality. We've uh, also got Brad Burness with us today, who's a coffee aficionado. He's going to show us how to make the perfect cup of coffee. Did you know, uh, speaking of things to, you know, pick you up, uh, coffee stimulates brain activity. I know because it stimulates mine, girl. Is that is that is? I knew there was something different about you. Yes, I know. Well, I know okay, I know. use your brain and tell me about that soup. You I've got, got a from beautiful here. locally roasted squash soup with vegetables and some baked bread, nicely grilled and curled. What do we have here? Well, look, this is a new appetizer plate for two they have here at Coffee Matters. Uh, it features uh, Genoa salami, different kinds of cheeses. Love the cheeses. We've got pesto. We've got hummus. We've got asparagus wrapped in prosciutto. Bread. And we've got a beautiful pasta salad here which features cherry tomatoes, green apples, uh, walnuts, all done in a beautiful balsamic vinaigrette. Wonderful. So, we've got a lot of stuff to get through today. Three courses. Three courses and this extra platter, so let's dig in. Perfect. A lot of people drink decaf coffee these days, and yet a lot of restaurants don't serve decaf coffee. It should be a given. Decaf and regular. Well, here we are in the One Chef, One Critic kitchen, and you know, uh, this is the most depressing time of the year. The days are long, the days are cold, they're dark. What you need is a real antidepressant, and I'm not talking about drugs. No, 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 no. <laughs> what you need is a comedian, an actress, a writer, an artistic director. What you need is Amy House. Oh my gosh, Carl, <laughs> thank you. It's so nice to have you on One Chef, One Critic. Uh, I'm flattered to be yeah, here. Yeah, we tried you. to work this out a while ago, but you couldn't do it, but I'm glad you're here now. I am very glad too, and look what you're cooking yes. today. Yes, well, oh we, were, we, were, we were thinking, what, what, what would everybody know uh, Amy from uh, in these recent years? And I, I would have to say it's those ads that are on television all the time where you're promoting Newfoundland products. That that was an amazing experience, Carl. Yeah. To be going around to the farms of Newfoundland and meeting all the farmers, and it's really enlightening to do that kind of thing because you know you never think about where our food is coming from. I think we're more conscious of it now, yeah. but uh, we're all very conscious of buying local now. Yeah, and, absolutely. Uh, it's amazing to know how much is out there too. Yeah, it, it yeah. really is. I started my own garden last summer. Perfect for you. Yeah. Well, Steve has some local product for you today. Well, I do. Lewis, the meat manager at Coleman's in Mount Pearl there, got me some beautiful lamb shanks. shanks. Oh my and yes. uh, these are from Maury's Farm out in the Ghouls. And uh, we're going to be making a lamb osabuco. Oh. So, um, osabuco. Osabuco. Ooh, so maybe sounds... we should start away. So, yeah. okay, first of all, I've got my pan nice and hot. We'll just put a little bit of oil in there. Osabuco is also uh, made with, with veal. Veal. But it's. It's also a very good dish uh, when you use lamb. So is osabuco Greek? It sounds Greek. It sounds oh, well, it's, like sambuca. Uh, it's, it's an Italian dish, oh. actually. Yeah. A traditional mm -hmm. Italian dish, yeah, very uh -huh. much so. And it's peasant food. It's a, it's a very, you know, country dish. Uh, stick to your ribs winter dish is what I like. So all I've done is seasoned it. I'm just going to put it in a little bit of flour to brown. Mm -hmm. And away we go. 
Gorgeous. We'll turn that a little higher. Sorry about that. That's Where okay. We go. Yep. I get my uh, lamb locally too, Steve. Who's that from? We get it from Dick Whitaker. Oh, I know Dick. Yes, yeah. yes, yes, yes. yes. Yeah. That's the firm we went to visit uh, right. when we were doing the ads. Yeah, yeah that's it's right. great. Yeah. Dick was in the ad with you, wasn't yes, he? Yes, he was. Yes, that's right. He's just magic. Yeah. 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 So what, uh, do you cook much? Do you have time? I You're so busy. I love to cook. I love to cook. I love to exper experiment. The sad yep. thing is I usually have a dinner party and experiment that night. So I never know if it's going to turn out <laughs> <laughs> right or not. Right? Yeah. Well, cooking but, is an art. Yeah, it is. And you, you just let it happen. But uh, I yeah. love to cook. And it's an event in yeah. our house every yeah. night, actually. <laughs> Now, what would one of your characters uh, have if they were having a dinner party? Say, Mar your character, Marguerite. Yes. What would Marguerite have well, if she was having people in for dinner? Marguerite has no choice but to have uh, roast and potatoes because Ramsay, that's her husband, Ramsay. Right. Does it put a little bit he, of pepper on there again? Yes, mm -hmm. I would love to. He will only eat meat and potatoes. Like, she can't make anything exotic like goulash, right, mm. Steve? Like, you know, like Marguerite can't make... Uh, you know, macaroni salad. Ooh. She can't because <laughs> Ramsey eats all the click out of it. Oh, so, right. So yeah. she can't be at that. Yeah. So she, you know, yeah. like roast lamb, forget it. Braised lamb, braised, we call that fried. Fried, yeah. Oh, yeah. fried, yeah. yeah. I know, it's so gauche. <laughs> <isn't> it, <laughs> fried lamb. So I'll give you these tongs. Maybe okay. we'll just check and we can just turn them over. Right now? So we'll just have a look, see how if the bread. Oh, oh, they're really nice. nice. Yes. Nice. Do you think we should yep. turn them yet? Yeah, yeah, actually, I think we can. Okay. Well, the browning is the browning is really important because uh, that that's what creates the flavor. Flavor. Yes. It's going to caramelize all them flavors, mm -hmm. and it's going to be absolutely gorgeous. And does the browning and crisping uh, will that um, keep all the flavors inside? It will you? do. So it's yeah. going to sear it all together. Yeah, yeah. Because sometimes you know you you tend to want to scrape all the fat off before you start oh, cooking. Oh, we want all that flavor in yeah, there, absolutely. Yeah, 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 yeah. it's gorgeous. Now, how long will we have to fry them? Oh, only for a couple of minutes, because what we're going to do, we're going to transfer that into the pot there, Carl, in a moment, into yes. the, oh. the croissette. Oh, ready and, to go. Uh, I see. Do you have a favorite character of all the characters that you've done over the years, Amy? Well, I have a couple. Uh, Ida used to always be my favorite character. She's the lady in the rocking chair talking to Mercedes down in the garden, you know, and asking yeah. about Mercedes's husband and all that kind. But now I have a new character in my new show called Scratch and Pull about yes. the uh, Nevada tickets. And right. there's an old guy out by the store, and his name is Joe Atham. And mm. he's the guy, you know, that's always out by the store with his pants up across his ribs and his <laughs> tube right pulled down yeah. over his yeah. head and his chin stuck We all up. know somebody like that. Yeah, we all, we all do. Yeah. How am I doing, Steve? Am Good. I okay? Yeah, that's fine. I'm okay? You should right. see is how high Steve has his pants underneath that. Oh, yeah. Oh, I can imagine. And they're tartan, too. They're, oh, they're tartan. <laughs> we can now transfer it into the pot there. Okay. Yep. So you don't put any oil in the pot? No, no. All okay. the uh, we're going to be transferring everything into there afterwards anyway. Oh, so, okay. I see. This is your juice. This is it, yeah. That's the juice. Yeah, we'll put all our lamb in there now. Perfect. Great. So you have some room there. Gorgeous. There we go. Oh, I might pinch that too much. Here no, we go. That's perfect. This is a great, great lesson, Steve, because I would have fried that a lot more, but no, I see No, no, that's going to be doing. fine. Now we're going to yeah. be putting this in there. Yeah. Our onions. onions. And then I'll give you oh. a little... Wrong utensil. Wrong, a little <laughs> spatula in there now. <laughs> Very good. These spatulas are great too, hey? Yeah, because My you're... favorite cooking utensil is a spatula. <laughs> Scrape the goodness out Scrape of it. Scrape the goodness out of yeah. it. Steve, are there any uh, vegetables going in this dish? Not uh, this particular one. What we're going to do is just put some potatoes, in, uh, sorry, potatoes, some tomatoes in there. Yep. And a lot of herbs. We're going to put some rosemary in there, which goes very well with lamb, as Yum, we know. Yes. And Shall I stir it? Yeah. By all means. You stir it too, Carl. Yeah. We, I was, no, I was just going to say, uh, I know uh, all three of us are big fans of local uh, produce. Uh, I was just thinking, you know, the other day I had some uh, local carrots and I couldn't get over how much sweeter they were than the carrots that are imported, you know? It's true, and they don't take as Tomato paste to there, Carl. Okay. Yeah. Local carrots don't take as long to cook either. No, I guess and they're so much sweeter. I so know, sweet. I know. I'm yes. also going to add some cinnamon to that as well, Carl. Cinnamon, that's mm. interesting, interesting, Steve. What about garlic, Steve? Is there any garlic in this? Just, just a touch, just a touch we're going to be adding to that, so. Oh, oh I, I would have gone with a lot of oh. garlic. Oh, God. I love oh. garlic. 
I love garlic yeah, too. I would have. Well, I'm going to go with a lot of wine. But yeah, you know, wine is good too, as long as it's good. As long as it's good wine. Is this <laughs> chef's wine or is this it's, real uh, good wine? Cabernet Sauvignon. Oh well, okay. <laughs> That'll do. Cabernet Sauvignon. But you know, Carl, garlic and onions is a really good diet. You don't lose any weight, but you look smaller from far away. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Yeah, and then we're just going to add some tomatoes. People, people tend not to want to get too close. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, but they're both very good for you. They good are. Good for the heart. Yeah. Yeah. Now, while that comes to the boil, and through the magic of TV, because what we'll do, we'll bring this to the boil, then we're going to add that the to the lamb chunks. TV. If you just step the to the magic of TV. The magic of TV. Oh, this is so exciting. Oh, my goodness. Oh, 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 get, oh, you got two pots. We've got two <laughs> pots. <laughs> because what we'll do, we'll add the sauce to the, the lamb shanks, and they're going to take about three hours, cooked very yeah. slowly at oh. about 350, 375. And oh, oh, my gosh. gosh. That is amazing. Yeah. Just <gasps> tip that up to so the camera. Absolutely can see it. there. Isn't that beautiful? Nicely Look braised there, folks. nice rich sauce. Oh. It's divine. That is going to go oh so well with a nice, is... uh, a nice red wine. And we're going to be serving that with some basmati rice. Amy, uh, you're also the, uh, what's your official, I would say artistic director, but is that your title? I'm uh, actually the artistic animateur. animateur. Because Resource Center for the Arts uh, is a, it's a, a community owned theatre company. It's yes. for all of us. So I, an artistic director would choose a season for their own theatre company, but the uh, Resource Centre for the Arts Theatre Company has a reading committee mm -hmm. and uh, we get submissions from a lot of people across the world now since the web. Mm -hmm. But uh, our mandate is to produce and promote Newfoundland and Labrador artists. So uh, we get in on all the new plays and new, uh, you, new what, works. What do you have coming up now uh, in, in this uh, winter oh, and spring. Oh, a really exciting show coming up. It's Sarah Tilly's new play called The Incomplete Herstory of Women in Newfoundland oh. and Labrador. And it's an adult clown show. And, uh, well, that sounds there's, different. It, it's, it's hilarious. Can actually. I join it? Yeah. Sure, yeah. But it's all, yeah, you can. <laughs> sure, yeah. Steve. Yeah, but it please, goes right back please. to the Vikings. Take them. Take them. <laughs> <laughs> somebody take them, yeah. yeah. Um, we'll have, you can do craft services. How no problem, that? no problem. I'll be there. Anyway, while he's auditioning for you, yes. I'm going to go down and select a wine from the wine oh, cellar. Oh, that's okay? excellent. I'll be right I love back. wine too, Steve. Yes, I know. He, I know. He's got his friend down there, you know. He's got a friend in is, the is, cellar. He's got a friend in the cellar, you know. Hi, Andrew. Hello, Carl. How, How are you doing? You? Gosh. Excellent, thank you. Well, that's good since it's such a depressing time of the year. My God, the days are so long. Oh. And anyway, we've got a real bright spot up there today. A ray of sunshine. Amy House, one oh, of my favorite people. A lot of fun. A lot of yeah, fun. Yeah, she's is. super, isn't she? Yes. Yeah, she just makes you smile. Anyway, um, we're doing a real kind of cold weather dish. It's uh, lamb. Also buco, Ooh, lamb, nice lamb, lamb shank. shank. Yeah, you, yeah. One of my favorite dishes. Yeah, it's sort of a, a fall winter dish. Uh, braised meats, the fall off the bone, uh, yeah. thick, gooey, rich sauces, some root vegetables. Yeah, I love Perfect it. season yeah. for this meal. This meal is actually uh, in the old days a peasant dish. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the shank was yeah. actually uh, tossed away and not really eaten, so the peasants used to uh, find a way to cook it. They've done great things with this, haven't they? Mm, they certainly have. Yeah, they now, knew how to eat, you see. So this is a very hearty, uh, robust dish. So yep. we're going to need a, a nice, big, robust red wine. How does that sound? It sounds great. What do you, what do you have? I robust think that we should red. stay in the old world today. Uh, I think Spain, Italy, and France might be in order. Yep. Uh, from Spain, you may enjoy this. This is a nice entry level. I believe it's $11.95 these days at the NLC. It is the uh, 2005 Tinto Cuvi, 100% Tempranillo. Mm. And Tempranillo and lamb just have a natural affiliation for each other. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. okay. Now, another good bright point about this one is that for $12 at the NLC, you can get that, or you can get this one, the more bang for your buck. Wow. And uh, this is only 22 something, so you save an extra $2 by buying <laughs> the bigger bottle. That's a pretty good deal. Yeah. Something else you might be interested in, uh, f from France, from the Rhone. <laughs> From the Northern Rhone, the Crows Hermitage region, mm -hmm. this is the 2006 Chapoutier, uh, mm -hmm. Les uh, Maisonnets. Mm -hmm. And this is 100% uh, Syrah. 
Now, it's something interesting about this region, Crow's Hermitage region, they are able to put up to a 15% uh, combination of Marsan and Roussan in the bottle, two white grapes. Mm. This one, though, is 100% Syrah, 90 points the 2006 got from Wine Spectator. That's pretty good. Yes. Okay. Finally, from Italy, from the Tuscany region, Brunello di Montalcino's little brother, Rosso mm. di Montalcino. Uh, very similar to uh, the uh, its older brother, uh, the Brunello. Uh, just a little less time aging. This only spends one year uh, in wood and six months in the bottle before it's released to the public. Beautiful acidity, goes great with this beef dish or this lamb dish that you're cooking. Well, I'm going to try this Cuvi because uh, you mentioned the Tempranillo goes very well with lamb. It is. And uh, I'm curious to see what it tastes like. Excellent. So, thanks Please very much. Let me know. Enjoy. See you later. Cheers. Okay, bye bye. Enjoy 2009. Yeah. And try not to get too depressed with this weather. Never. Steve, I tell you. It's a depressing time of year, but, you know, if Carl doesn't hurry up, I'm getting depressed looking at this. I morning. know, I know. I just can't wait to get into it. I mean, we're always waiting for him. I know. Yeah. Oh, I'm here. Very I'm here. Finally, finally. Um, this is a Tempranillo. Ooh. And Andrew says that uh, it's going to be a very good match with the lamb shank. Oh, very good. Cheers. He was very pleased to hear that we were doing lamb shank today, mm. by the way. Mm. Was he pleased that he wasn't um, getting any? I think, yeah, I think he was kind of hinting, you know. Uh, there you go. I think the crew Only three were hinting, servings. too. <laughs> yeah, we'll worry about them later. Yeah, very good. We can uh, find something, some pizza or something. For them. Yeah. Anyway, uh, uh, my gosh, you know, this is, this is a real pick-me-up, isn't yeah. it? Look how colorful this dish is. And the colorful plates. And, oh, oh there we goodness. go. Let's have a taste of Steve's okay. Osobuco, lamb Osobuco. I'm hoping it's going to just see, fall uh, apart. See what it tastes like. Oh it's comfort food. It is comfort. Yeah. Mm. I'm very comfort. Dig in. It's lovely. Yeah. So, uh, Amy, uh, do, you, do you have any favorite recipes? Well, I have several. But, you know, I have to say my favorite thing to cook, and what I cook on Christmas Eve, is uh, mousse pie. Mm. Yeah, traditional. And I have my mother-in-law's uh, crust recipe. It's an amazing pie crust. Is it, is it on the bottom and the top, or just I on do, the top? yeah, I do it on the top and the bottom, okay. and um, it's well, good for days. We're gonna we're gonna let folks have that recipe, folks. Uh, CentralDairies.com is the website. Just click on the One Chef One Critic page. You'll get Amy's mousse pie recipe and Steve's fabulous asobuco recipe for lamb. Uh, thanks for being with us. Oh, great you're, pleasure. You're a real trooper. Thank you. Oh, thank cheers, you for yes. having me. Cheers. Yeah. Well, thank you, Amy. <laughs> Looking forward mm. to that new stew. For more of Chef Steve Watson's recipes, our recommended wine lists, and guest recipes, log on to centraldairies.com. Have a recipe that you want to share with us? Send it along to onechef.onecritic at rci.rogers.com. Be sure to attach your name, address, and contact number, and you win a guest could be eligible to win a dinner for two at one of our city's finest restaurants. Let us know what you think of the show at 757-9600. When chopping garlic, sprinkle a little salt on your garlic so it won't stick to your cutting board or your knife. Three Amigos, one of their most popular desserts here at Coffee Matters. Steve, we've got white, dark, and milk chocolate, all in that one little uh, round ball there. We've also got a beautiful Bailey's Cappuccino. What do you have? I have a white chocolate cheesecake with a ribbon of passion fruit, and of course, with a light Italian meringue, and with my double espresso. Ah, oh, and we've also got some Leonidas chocolates here, which they sell at Coffee Matters exclusively, and they're Belgian chocolate, by the way. Now, do you want to make the perfect cup of coffee? I certainly do. Brad Burness is an expert in coffee making, and here he is. Brad, the aroma here today is absolutely fantastic. Perfect. We've got all of these different types of coffee beans and the different grinds, and even some chocolate, which I'm just getting a hint of. Right now. So, yeah. give us a little lesson in how to purchase beans, grind beans, and make different styles of coffee. Okay, these particular beans are all a fairly traded product, which I think is uh, kind of important these days. And uh, what we have here, we have a light roast, we have a medium, and we have a dark roast as well. Depending on the time of the day, you may want to choose a light roast in the morning to go with, like, say, breakfast foods, which would be fruit and whatnot, because the coffee itself has a brighter taste to it. Afternoon, perhaps, you may want a, a medium roast, which would be smoother, thicker, more mellow. And then at nighttime, if you want to maybe match it up with some dark chocolate, 
Maybe a nice dark roast would go quite well, too. I love this dark roast. It has a, a bit of a sheen to it. It does. The, uh, you get the coffee oils on the outside of the darker roasts, uh, as well as some of the medium roasts as well. Yeah. Beautiful. So the darker the roast, uh, the darker the food, I guess. You have uh, your dark roasted coffee with chocolate or chocolate cake. You can really match it up well. It's, yeah. uh, you wouldn't have a glass of orange juice with a dark chocolate cake. So why would you have a Wouldn't bright, go, yeah. why would you have a bright yeah. tasting coffee with a dark uh, dark chocolate? Now you've got this uh, French press coffee maker here. Uh, which one of these grinds would you use in this particular coffee because maker? Because of the method of the, the whole plunging down of the coffee maker, you want to use a coarse grind with a French press. Mm -hmm. If it's too fine, you can't physically put the uh, push the plunger down. Mm -hmm. Okay, now let's talk about grinding. We've got a really nice looking grinder here. We do, this is a gorgeous one. This is a, uh, this is a burr grinder as opposed to a propeller. It has different grind settings on it as well. Um, your standard coffee maker would take a, a medium to fine grind, or as we spoke earlier, the French press would take a coarse grind. And these are nicely adjustable from espresso all the way up to um, your percolators or your, your coarser grinds. So for the, uh, this is a re regular filter drip machine, which most of us have actually. Absolutely, and the main, main, uh, main points to this, number one is to use uh, filtered water as your, uh, your main point there, and to use the correct amount of coffee as well to go into that using a medium to find grind. I would use a coffee scoop or a tablespoon, so basically the same thing, and I would aim to use one of those per cup. Mm -hmm. If your coffee maker says 10 cups, use 10 scoops. Some people will say use a little bit more, a little mm -hmm. bit less. I think it's a very good mm -hmm. benchmark to start one on one. Okay, top down and away we go. One last thing you want to talk about, you want to heat up the, uh, the thermal unit before you actually uh, start brewing, otherwise the coffee won't stay warm for quite as long. Okay. Good boiling water really helps. The French press is one of the best methods for making coffee. It's one of the most inexpensive as well. What you need though, you need your freshly ground, coarse coffee. For this particular one, which is about a liter, I'm gonna use five heaping tablespoons. It's one of the simplest ways of making coffee as well. And relatively foolproof. The next thing you wanna use is freshly boiled, filtered water. You don't wanna use boiling water, though. You want it about one minute off the boil. Pour it straight onto the grinds. This is where you can tell if the grinds are really fresh because it'll really start to bubble up and whatnot. You would then generally stir it um, before you press the uh, actual top back onto it. But we're just gonna actually simply do it like this. Okay, this whole machine works on a vacuum principle. Coffee grind started in the top, whereas the fresh filtered water started in the bottom. And uh, the heat from the, from, the, uh, from the element pushed the hot water up into the top, filtered a while, the vacuum pressure changed, the coffee ended up at the bottom. Uh, final thing is simply to take off the spent grinds, lay it on the stand, and there you have your coffee, which you can then take to the table. An excellent method of brewing coffee. Okay, so we've had four to five minutes to let this steep. There we go, that's our French press coffee. That's it. Great. Three different styles of coffee here, Brad. Yep. Three different roasts of coffee beans. Uh, I don't know which one I want to try first. It's uh, why don't we go with this one? I'd, Absolutely. I'd like to try it because it looked so unusual when it was being made. Yeah, it's definitely a, a conversation piece. Yeah, at a dinner for table. sure, yeah. Yeah, That's it the looks vacuum pot. beautiful. Absolutely. Yeah, very rich and extremely aromatic. I'm just going to go for the light roast myself. Okay. Traditional method. Oh, it's beautiful, beautiful. Fabulous coffee. Brad wow. Burness, Coffee and Company. Thanks for being on One Chef, One Critic. Steve, uh, these desserts were amazing as usual. Uh, we should actually give a credit to Tony Holden, who's a pastry chef out of Moncton. A native of Newfoundland. Certainly a native of Newfoundland. And also thank uh, Earl Norman and Gary Holden, who own Coffee Matters, for allowing us to be here today. And uh, now, do you know everything you ever wanted to know about coffee? I certainly do. I'm all perked up now, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. And I hope you are. Thanks for joining us on this edition of One Chef, One Critic. He's, he's filming us now, hoping we'll say something hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, say yeah. something funny. Yeah, yeah. Did you, you, know, did you know that coffee stimulates brain activity? Yeah, at least I've got a brain. <laughs> did you hear that?
Did you hear what he just said to me? Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. not the bully on this show. Here. Yeah. What yeah. a nasty. And it's stimulated You're nasty. with coffee. You're with a mean. Espresso. You're a mean, nasty cook. No, no, no. Cook. Yeah. Cook. <laughs> well, that's what you are. You're a cook. cook. You cook. <laughs> Chef. Cook. Oh, critic. Critic.